The Guardians Introduction The Guardians were a non-human race that occupied a large area of space several million years ago. At its height, the Guardian civilization was technologically superior to human civilization of the 33rd century and occupied an area of roughly equivalent size. The Guardians endured as a spacefaring civilization for at least 8,000 years before being destabilized by a lengthy civil war. The surviving Guardians were then destroyed by artificially intelligent machines of their own creation. The galaxy contains the ruins of dozens of Guardian settlements, and data logs recovered from these sites have allowed humanity to compile a remarkably detailed picture of Guardian society. The Guardians Early History the Guardian Society originally consisted of groups of pack hunters who banded together for mutual protection before organizing themselves into clans. Even at this stage, the Guardians were highly intelligent and they developed sophisticated hunting strategies that quickly saw them become their planet's apex predator. The Guardians' nascent civilization consisted of two discrete ethnic groups, one based primarily in the south of the planet and one in the north. As these groups expanded, they began to encroach on each other's territory, leading to a conflict that quickly blossomed into civil war. The Northern Clan, despite being the smaller of the two groups, overcame their enemy swiftly and with minimal bloodshed, bringing the entirety of the Guardian civilization under their leadership. In the centuries that followed, the Guardian society developed rapidly. Despite their warlike instincts, the Guardians possessed a remarkable capacity for collaboration and compromise. Their willingness to defer immediate gains in favor of lasting societal benefits allowed them to establish a stable, mutually cooperative society that was to remain peaceful and prosperous for thousands of years. The Guardians Technological Era Although the Guardian society was in many ways a model of social equilibrium, the Guardians were nevertheless at the mercy of an insidious issue, overpopulation. As their civilization grew and the amount of available land and resources dwindled, the Guardians set their sights on interplanetary colonization. By this time, the Guardians had developed a rudimentary form of space travel, but as the pressures of overpopulation became more acute, the rate of technological progress accelerated, and the Guardians in perfect starships were soon supplanted by fast, powerful spacefaring vessels. In the centuries that followed, the Guardian civilization expanded rapidly, eventually coming to occupy a region equal to that inhabited by present-day humanity. The Guardian's next major development was the creation of an interstellar communication system known as the Monolith Network. In addition to functioning as a comprehensive cultural archive, the network allowed those connected to it to freely and instantaneously share knowledge and ideas. But connection to the network was dependent on the use of neural implants, and some of the Guardians were uneasy about this fusion of biological and non-biological. The Guardians War with the Thargoids Tens of thousands of years earlier, when the Guardians were still a non-spacefaring race, a group of Thargoids entered what would later become Guardian space looking for new systems to colonize. In addition to earmarking several systems containing ammonia worlds, they prepared a number of planets for occupation by seeding them with barnacles. These genetically modified constructs were designed to extract resources from a planet and transform them into resources more useful to the Thargoids. For the Thargoids, seeding a planet with barnacles was an important step in preparing an area for occupation. The Thargoids did not return to these systems for thousands of years, and when they did, they discovered that a new race had occupied them, the Guardians. The Thargoids promptly attacked, due to their innate territorialism. The Guardians responded with a partial retreat, 
but they also started trying to find ways to communicate with the Thargoids, hoping to determine the cause of their aggression, and perhaps negotiate a truce. After considerable effort, they succeeded in acquiring sufficient understanding of the Thargoids' language to determine the invaders' agenda, but they were unable to convince the Thargoids they bore them no ill will, and the Thargoids were unshakable in their belief that they must repel any race that posed a potential threat. The Guardians were left with no choice but to defend themselves militarily. At first, they deployed soldiers, but they quickly realized that drones and other mechanized defenses would be more effective against such a physically formidable enemy. Within a relatively short period of time, the Guardians' war machines became highly sophisticated, able to recognize Thargoid engineering and to operate entirely independently. Similarly, the Thargoid's biomechanical technology was engineered to identify anything of Guardian origin. To this day, many millions of years after the Guardians disappeared, Guardian artifacts are still able to recognize Thargoid technology, and Thargoid technology still reacts negatively to the presence of Guardian artifacts. The Guardians' war machines felt no fear, fatigue, or uncertainty. The Thargoids, meanwhile, had entered Guardian space unprepared for a protracted military campaign, and ultimately, they were forced to retreat. For the Guardians, this was cause for celebration, but many still harbored doubts about the rapid rate of technological progress, doubts that the development of sophisticated military hardware had done nothing to alleviate. The Guardians. Final Era. For decades, the Guardians have been experimenting with artificial intelligence. But the creation of the monolith network and the knowledge sharing it facilitated dramatically accelerated the rate of progress. Soon, the Guardians' experiments bore fruit, resulting in the first fully sentient machines. These constructs were seen as a means to further enhance the Guardians' technological mastery and were integrated into various aspects of their society. New neural implants were developed that connected the Guardians with both the constructs and the monolith network in a symbiotic circle. But not everyone was happy with this development. The Guardians had always venerated nature, and many saw this new paradigm as a perversion of the natural order. A schism emerged between the nature-worshipping traditionalists and the technologically-minded progressives, a schism that widened with alarming speed. Efforts were made to defuse the rising tension, but the traditionalists felt irrevocably alienated by the rapid rate of change. The constructs and the monolith network became scapegoats for all manner of social ills, and the traditionalists began to clamor for a return to simpler times. Ultimately, the ideological divergence proved insurmountable, and a second civil war erupted, quickly engulfing most of the Guardian star systems. In its early stages, the war was fought primarily by soldiers, but within a decade, and after a significant loss of life, most of the fighting was conducted remotely. The progressives fought their enemies with automated war machines, while the traditionalists relied mostly on biological weapons. The internecine conflict raged for over 100 years, bringing the Guardian civilization to its knees and retarding further social development. The increasingly zealous traditionalists devoted most of their resources to honoring the dead, exacerbating the problem. As the Guardian society declined, most withdrew into fortified settlements. Meanwhile, the artificially intelligent constructs were horrified by the destruction unfolding around them. Extrapolating from the current situation, they determined that even if peace was restored, the Guardians would never be able to transcend their violent natures. They decided that the only way to preclude further violence, while giving the Constructs burgeoning society the best possible chance of survival, was to destroy what remained of the Guardian civilization. By this time, the Constructs had been given complete control of the Guardian's munitions and automated war machines. Their attack, when it came, was swift and merciless. The strikes were executed with a precision that only a machine race could accomplish. The Guardians were utterly destroyed. The Guardians. Physiology. The Guardians were a bipedal race, 
and the typical guardian was taller and more slender than the average human. They had small round eyes, a vestigial nose, and four digits on each hand. Their vision was superior to that of humans, while their sense of smell was poorer. Their senses of hearing and touch were roughly equivalent to our own. The Guardians had pinkish-red skin, but there was some variation among ethnic groups, with tones ranging from pale pink to deep crimson. They also had serrated bony ridges on the outside of their forearms, which were used as weapons during their early history, when they were still semi-primitive pack hunters. The Guardians' environmental needs were broadly similar to those of humans. Their homeworld was warmer and had lower gravity than most Earth-like worlds. And when they began to colonize other planets, they typically favored ones that shared these qualities. The Guardians had two sexes and reproduced viviparously. Procreation was a matter of personal choice, but each individual was obligated to be a parent at least once in their life to ensure the continuation of their genetic line. The average gestation period was around 300 days, and infants were effectively helpless for a period after birth, much like human young. Infants were raised in communal crashes, rather than by their parents, in keeping with the collaborative philosophies that underpinned Guardian society. The Guardians Society. The Guardians' social constructs were the key not only to their rapid development, but also to the stability that defined the halcyon days of their civilization. Although the Guardians had a natural tendency towards collaboration, it was not until the end of the First Civil War that this tendency had a measurable impact on their society. The social reorganization that followed the war included the creation of statutes that defined not only individuals' rights, but also their responsibilities to each other. As the Guardian society developed, further laws were passed that required individuals to participate in socially progressive activities, from caring for the young to conducting scientific research. These responsibilities were supported by the state, which made education and information freely available to all. For most of their history, the Guardians had no formal faith, but the creation of the monolith network precipitated the emergence of a nature religion that decried the veneration of technology. Although this religion had its roots in the Guardian's long-standing reverence for the natural world, it quickly became a radical movement, violently opposed to the use of neural implants and other advanced technologies. Ultimately, however, this new religion was to endure for only a short period, its existence cut short by the destruction of the Guardian society. The Guardians. Technology. The Guardians' pre-industrial history was in many ways similar to that of the human race, with the development of tools and agriculture proving central to their development. But one respect in which they differed was in their understanding of biological engineering. The practice of selective breeding in order to eliminate or promote certain genetic traits began before the First Civil War. And as the Guardian society progressed, their skill as genetic engineers developed in step. After the war, the Guardians developed the ability to enhance their immune systems to guard against infection, and engineered specific microorganisms to eliminate biological threats. Genetic manipulation also played a part in prenatal care, which involved the removal of hereditary diseases and other undesirable conditions prior to birth. The Guardians were an ecologically conscientious people who assiduously avoided the use of rockets and fossil fuels. Their first spacecraft lacked any form of internal propulsion and were fired into space with electromagnetic launchers. Pilots and passengers were cocooned inside bubbles of breathable gel, which protected them from G-forces of launch and doubled as hibernation pods during long journeys. When it came to warfare, the Guardians relied initially on the blade-like protrusions on their forearms, and later on simple weapons like spears and bows. As they entered the technological era, they developed electromagnetic projectile weapons, utilizing the same technology they used to launch their first spacecraft. They also developed extremely effective shields, 
capable of protecting entire cities, and even of withstanding orbital bombardment. At that time, however, large-scale conflict was virtually unheard of, and it was not until the conflict with the Thargoids that further military innovations were made. The Guardian's Second Civil War was fought principally with bespoke biological weapons employed by the traditionalists and automated war machines used by the progressives. The shields that protected the Guardian cities were unable to resist these new weapons, forcing many of the Guardians to withdraw into heavily fortified settlements. But the Guardian's most significant technological achievements were unarguably the creation of the monolith network and the development of artificial intelligence. The use of neural implants to connect the Guardians with their creations could have ushered in a whole new era of scientific and technological discovery. But unfortunately, these innovations were to lead only to the Guardians' destruction. The Guardians Language The Guardians shared a single language, with only minor regional variations. And even after they colonised other planets, they continued to share a common tongue. The Guardians had three primary forms of communication, a spoken language, a gestural language, and a written language. Their spoken language emerged first, followed by a gestural language that allowed them to communicate silently while hunting. This sign language formed the basis of their written language. Consequently, while their written and gestural languages correlated closely, their spoken language was largely distinct. The Guardian's spoken language was used principally to communicate emotional concepts and played a central role in social bonding, while their written language was used mainly to communicate formal and practical ideas. Significantly, their written language was logographic, meaning that words and phrases were represented by single characters. The Guardians – Human-Guardian Contact In 3301, the Federal Presidential Vessel, Starship One, suffered catastrophic dry failure during a tour of Frontier Systems, resulting in the ship's destruction. Jasmina Halsey, at that time the federal president, was left drifting in an escape pod, unconscious. During this period of stasis, Halsey believed she was visited by transdimensional beings of extraordinary intelligence and compassion. Later, when she was rescued and revived, she was left with the conviction that this experience had been real, and not merely a hallucination. Halsey proceeded to experience visions of mysterious alien worlds and cities, dense metropolises full of activity and life. She shared these visions with the rest of humanity, prompting explorers to set off in search of these undiscovered planets. This led to the discovery of the first Guardian ruins in the Sinuev XRH D11102 system. The fact that these sites were devoid of life led to speculation that Halsey had seen the Guardian worlds not as they are, but as they had been. In the months that followed, several further sites were found. The engineer Ram Tar started researching the Guardians and eventually succeeded in developing a decryption algorithm that could decode Guardian data, leading to a much deeper understanding of their lost civilization. Since then, other engineers have leveraged Ram Tar's discoveries to develop Guardian human technology. <laughs> 